I feel like one thing that we're always just fighting with and battling and struggling with is procrastination. It's like having these two opposing forces going on inside of our brain where we want to do something, we want to accomplish something, to finish something, may even be something that we're looking forward to or that's gonna greatly be beneficial to our lives. And then on the other hand, just resisting the hell out of it. So keep listening because we're gonna talk about procrastination in general and then procrastination as it relates to your home and actually making progress when you're trying to create home spaces that make you feel really good and amazing. Stephen Pressfield, the author of The War of Art, calls procrastination and all of its many forms resistance. And as Stephen Pressfield says, resistance is the root of more unhappiness than poverty, disease, and erectile dysfunction. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces and ways to feel more simplified and happy at home. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. So maybe not super surprising, but this subject of overcoming procrastination and dread has been on my list of videos to batch for couple of weeks now. I've been meaning to batch all of these videos and every time I would pull out my laptop to start forming an outline and doing my research, I would inevitably resort to pulling up old spreadsheets and reformulating all of my formulas within the spreadsheets because that's important too, you know? And it's like I would so intently study these other things that I would exhaust myself and then I would say, you know, I can't batch record videos and create good content when I'm this exhausted. I need to take a 20 minute nap. And for those of you who aren't familiar with my language, 20 minutes is what I like to call an hour and a half to two hours. So what do you do when you're procrastinating? Of course, when you're not reformulating all of your calculations in a spreadsheet or napping, well, I started watching videos on procrastination, you know, research. But actually in the process of researching this time, I came across a pretty good TEDx from Princeton University about the concept of procrastination. And it's like this man was watching me behind the scenes because he called me out on all of the things that I was doing, finding other tasks for me to bury myself into, you know, taking naps and then waking up and deciding I'm still not well rested enough to really produce good content and going back to sleep. You know, all of the things that we tend to very often do and the way that we deal with this resistance and procrastination on repeat. Something about the way that he presented this really helped to remind me and reinforce that procrastination isn't just some demon for us to be battling with all the time. It's not just resistance. It's actually a safety mechanism. It's just like, you know, the fear that holds us back from doing things. Procrastination is one of those forms that is meant to protect us and our self-worth, which I thought was a really interesting way of putting it. So I changed the title of this video from overcoming procrastination and dread to learning to live with procrastination and still get stuff done because that's what we really want. You can't completely remove procrastination. It's there for a reason, but you can learn to live with it and make those conscious decisions and still get stuff done. The speaker of this TEDx's name is Nick Vogue, and he talks about how procrastination is really more of a success failure paradox, that it's not a case of self-sabotaging, but rather a case of preserving self-worth. The higher the stakes, the stronger the procrastination. And he explained how this often stems from internalized standards from previous achievements. In other words, if you did something really well before, and now you're attempting to do it again, you're more likely to procrastinate in fear that what you're producing or what you're putting out there isn't going to live up to the previous standards. So that pressure causes a lot of internal resistance because as Nick Vogue puts it, self-worth is the paramount human need. This I could relate to. You see, a week or so back, I had my most popular video to date, which is great. Who doesn't wanna experience something positive and get some good feedback on something that you're producing? But I found that trying to follow that up and create inspiration and content for ideas to immediately follow such a well-received piece of content made the procrastination so much worse. This is 
by no means on the same scale. But Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, said that she experienced the same type of scenario. Right after she wrote the book, it had such high acclaims, and she didn't know if she would write another book after that, because what could she possibly write that was gonna be able to live up to the Eat, Pray, Love success that she had created? So you get closer and closer to the deadline, and at some point, the fear of not getting it done exceeds the fear of not doing it perfectly. Now, if you struggle frequently with that particular kind of procrastination, then Vogue does recommend that you focus on your awareness. Like with so many other things, focusing your intention and your awareness can help to just change how you experience things, right? So he recommends that you focus your awareness on things that will tip the scales away from avoidance and toward approach. So reconnecting to why you're wanting to accomplish said thing in the first place or what your true purpose is for taking that action at all. For example, in his own life, he shared that he would try to think of things as an experiment instead of as an end-all be-all result or make things small, which many people say, break it down, chunk it down, you know, into smaller pieces to make it not feel so big and overwhelming. So what does that have to do with the procrastination that we experience when doing things like around our house? And one of the big things that I run into with my students, for example, is how do I just get motivated to get started? And aside from like the strategies and technicalities behind that, there's a lot of procrastination that goes along with it. So if we're going by Vogue's example of procrastination, is it that we are afraid of our results not matching up to a previous great result or of our results not meeting our expectations at all? I don't think so. I think that it's a lot more likely that there's just more than one cause for procrastination. And the way that procrastination, usually due to overwhelm, tends to impact our homes is that we just end up not taking any action at all. Procrastination is probably the most passive way to sabotage any of the results that you're trying to achieve inside of your space, right? So if you're wanting to get the clutter out because you've been collecting boxes for five years down in your basement, procrastination is a nice passive way to just change nothing and ensure that everything remains the same and no additional work needs to be expended. My goal is to help you create holistic and clutter-free happy spaces, right? But creating is really just one phase of the process. The vastly larger phase is maintaining. When it comes to this particular type of procrastination, I've got six ways that you can learn to coexist with this natural tendency and still get stuff done. So here we go. Number one is to work on practicing your procrastination awareness. So you may already feel like you are pretty aware when you're procrastinating, and that may be true, but part of the sneakiness of procrastination is how easily and quickly it can mask itself. Here's an interesting thought. The act of procrastination and the act of rationalizing or covering up the procrastination are both coming from the same place, your brain. Your left brain is known for its rationalization and analytical skills, while your right brain is in charge of emotional and artistic pursuits. So while the right brain is thinking, I don't wanna do this, I would rather be doing something fun, the left brain quickly cooks up a rationalization to support this emotion. Try beating that without a backup. So that's exactly why practicing awareness and using awareness techniques can be so helpful when trying to overcome procrastination. Plus, it doesn't take much effort, so there's really no harm in giving it a go. Now, there are tons of different ways that you can do this. The idea is that you're taking some kind of a neutral action every time you get the urge to procrastinate. Some things that other people have done are to place a rubber band or a bracelet on your wrist and then just switch it to the other wrist every time you get the urge to procrastinate. Other things I've seen people do are to keep a journal or a notepad. You can use tally marks or you can put a coin in a jar for every time you get the urge to procrastinate. It's honestly not something that I use regularly. I've become a big fan of habit tracking and journaling and just paying attention, really. As long as you pay attention and create a mental note of what's going on, you can gain the data, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. The cool thing about this method is that it gives you data that you can use to develop better habits and to more effectively work with and past procrastination in the future. 
So you may notice a trend like certain times of the day or the week or the month when you feel less productive. And that less productive feeling or lower energy can cause you to naturally wanna procrastinate on things that are going to take more of your energy. Or you might notice certain tasks in general that bring on stronger urges to procrastinate. So seeing that data in front of you may naturally encourage you to set limits or it may naturally encourage you to plan some of the projects for times when you're not going to feel as strongly the urge to procrastinate. And you can effectively use all of that data for number two, which is to get ahead of the procrastination. Now this is something that I do everywhere and in any way possible. And it's essentially batching tasks of projects. This is something that I mentioned a couple of weeks back when I talked about my systems for creating simplicity in my life. One of those is that I batch everything. And that's been a huge game changer for me and helping me to overcome procrastination because I know myself and I know there are going to be weeks when I have zero motivation and I just feel mentally drained. So I plan ahead for that. When I get ahead of the game, I'm able to work and create from a place of freedom. So I don't feel rushed and I don't feel trapped by these close timelines, you know, I'm just, I'm able to enjoy the process really. So I suggest intentionally blocking together similar tasks and really scheduling them for times when you've historically felt more productive, which is the information that you ideally would have gained from step number one. Pro tip, it's a lot harder to procrastinate when it's on the schedule with firm timelines. If it's not scheduled, it's not real. Number three is to lower the resistance. I said earlier, procrastination equals resistance. And that's why a great method to get stuff done, even in the midst of procrastination, is to chunk down big projects so they aren't so scary. I know I mentioned this earlier with the other types of procrastination, and I think that it's just a good general rule of thumb for getting anything done, is to make projects not feel like they're so big, to make them feel more manageable. I talk about this a little bit more in my video on how to find the time to declutter, which you can watch right here. So take big projects like clearing out the garage and break it down into manageable tasks like go through three boxes or bring bags down from the attic. You know, just take small tasks and then see where it goes from there. If it still feels overwhelming, then start with the smallest viable step. That could be make a list you know, move a box to another location, lower the ladder for the attic, or in my case, make an outline for the content you're trying to batch. Tip number four is to turn a negative into a positive when you're able to. You know, you can sit there and think about how much you don't wanna do this thing, but that doesn't change the fact that you're going to be doing it. So instead, focus that mental energy on how you can turn this from a negative into a positive experience. Even small things like grocery shopping or driving in traffic or going to the post office, which is one of my personal least favorite things to do, can cause a growl of frustration. So think of what podcasts maybe you wanna to listen to while you're in the car on the way to run these errands or what audiobook you've been dying to dig into. I find that when I have something to learn or to mentally entertain me, I sometimes don't even wanna get out of the car. Like I've actually pulled my car off to the side of the road to finish listening to something that I wanted to listen to. So try to reframe the way that you're thinking and see if there's any possible way that you can flip the experience from a negative or frustrating one to a positive. Number five is to add urgency to everything. And this is something that I mentioned in my video on how to declutter faster, which I will put a card for right here. Urgency is why we're able to publish college essays and complete projects the night before the due date when we couldn't manage it the previous five nights, kind of like I was talking about earlier. If you can somehow add urgency without waiting to the last minute, then you'll find your procrastination diminishes. So here are two classically effective ways to easily add urgency to tasks. One of them is to cook in some accountability. We're more likely to follow through with something that we worry might inconvenience another person or risk us being judged or looking bad, you know? Nobody wants to come across as a flake. This is one reason why personal trainers are so successful. It's not that you couldn't just read a book and do the stuff on your own in most cases. The personal trainer is the accountability coach with a vested interest. For your home tasks, this could look like a group of people, maybe a Facebook group, friends, neighbors, family members, who are trying to keep you on track. Or it could be something as simple as planning a game night or a dinner party over at your house where people are gonna be coming over, which adds a little bit of that outside accountability as well as a deadline. Bringing us to the second method of easily adding urgency, which is timelines. 
they are necessary for any kind of urgency. If I didn't have a schedule of what I needed to accomplish daily, weekly, monthly, etc., I wouldn't be consistent in accomplishing anything. Trust me, I've tried. It's like I said before, if it isn't on the schedule, it isn't real. It could be completing a task before your favorite coffee shop starts their 10 a.m. happy hour. That would give you a built-in reward as well, which would be a double win. So you can set timers, you can create schedules with reminders or outside forces to support your timeline, such as scheduling a donation truck pickup to make sure that you're staying on task. Urgency really just overpowers procrastination. And number six is to enlist help even if you don't really need it. Doing something with someone else is just downright more entertaining. It doesn't just have to be for accountability. You know, if I'm not already out of the house, I hate leaving to run errands. It's like that activation energy that I need to get myself up and out the door sometimes is a drag. It's almost like splitting the pain between two people. We rarely go grocery shopping alone because that feels like a huge chore. Going together, it's still a chore, but also it's a social event. So when it comes to procrastinating in your home or procrastinating for something that you just don't want to do just for the sheer energy of it, then I recommend starting with those six methods. And let me know down in the comments if you have any methods that you use inside of your own home that helped you to pull yourself out of procrastination and those drags and help you to get things done. So here's to a productive week and learning to live with procrastination and still get stuff done. I'll catch you next week.